Kumau, Tepa, uh, Nsoko, and um, so many of them uh, that we didn't finish. Afari, the uh, next military hospital in Ashanti region, the um, uh, uh, Ashanti Regional uh, Hospital, um, several of them, the Bogatanga uh, Regional Hospital. Unfortunately, we didn't finish those completely before we left office. The new government came and it had priorities other than that, and so um, unfortunately those uh, projects stalled. But I've said and I've said over again that when we come, we believe that health is one of the most important um, 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 uh, ingredients of life. I mean, if you don't have good health, you don't have a good quality life. And so health is one of my priorities. And so when we come into office, one of the first things we'll do is to let those projects uh, commence again and complete all the hospitals, abandoned hospital projects, and actually build new hospitals so that Ghanaians can have access to good health care. Oreku um, Mafo, what strategic infrastructure do you think we need to fight pandemics in future? Um, we need access to uh, good he modern health facilities, and in every health facility, if we had all those hospitals working, we could have separated wards and turned them in iso into isolation wards at this time, so that we don't have to bring everybody, you know, uh, several kilometers down with the risk of infection to isolation wards, say, in Accra. Um, I hear the government has dedicated the University of Ghana Medical Center and the Ghana East Hospital as the principal medical facilities for um, uh, treating uh, COVID patients. But if we had finished all these projects, we could have taken sections of the wards and created isolation centers in many places. And so because we don't have that in many places, government is looking for schools and other places. But because they have not involved the chiefs and educated the chiefs and the assemblymen, then what is happening is every community you go to and you say you're going to set up an isolation center in one of the school blocks that is not being used, the people rise up and chase the people out. And that is the reason why you must involve the stakeholders, the chiefs, the traditional rulers, the assemblymen, the religious leaders, you must involve them. Because if you do, then they'll understand that you're using the school temporarily and that when you finish, it's going to be fumigated. There's no risk that there will be infection of the, the locals. And that when it's all done, you must have some incentive for them, you know, for sacrificing for us to use your school. Government will do this infrastructure project for you. And so these are things you can use to bring the people on board. Unfortunately, that has not been done. People just appear, they go and look at the school, and then you hear, oh, almost some day school, no be here, isolation center here, they, and Crofona yari ne baho. Obviously, they will refuse. And so I think we need to uh, look at that. From Abeku Hayford in Cape Coast. Your Excellency, what are your plans for using science and technology in Ghana to fight future pandemics and to stabilize Ghana's economy? It is important that we, indeed, the pandemic has been good, uh, has, has got some good um, um, uh, outcomes in a way. A lot of us have learned how to use social and digital uh, uh, media of mass communication to be able to uh, do business without having to physically move. And so in that way, we must continue that when we come out of this. We must use ICT technology so that where it is not necessary for people to move uh, physically to uh, a particular location, you can sit at home and have a teleconference. I had a virtual uh, teleconference, a Zoom conference with my COVID team. I have had Zoom conferences with our political committee. I um, uh, speak using um, WhatsApp video with several of my comrades in the morning if I need them to do something. And so I, I realized that a lot of the time we used to sit in cars and go outside, you know, to go and meet physically. You know, it wasn't necessary uh, to do so. But um, we must use uh, telemedicine, we must introduce telemedicine, and as I said, we must establish a national infectious diseases center, which is much like the CDC in the U.S., the uh, Center for Disease Control, I think, CDC. We must establish that here, which researches on pandemics, it researches on endemic illnesses, and predicts when there are going to be outbreaks and advises government when and what time government should start preparations for anything. For instance, the Center for Disease Control in Ghana, the National Infectious Disease Center, 
should be able to predict that the CSM period is coming in. You need this number of vaccines. You need this number of personnel to do this awareness program. You must start it at this time so that you don't have you know, uh, uh, more people dying. The cholera season is coming. You must start public awareness. You must ensure that water is flowing properly so that people don't, you know, use contaminated water. These are things that, you know, such a center can do. It can look at diseases outside, and when there's an outbreak somewhere, say that, look, we better watch this. This disease could spread to Ghana. And so um, it's something that I'm committed to, and um, it's something we'll um, activate um, if, by the grace of God and the uh, um, uh, grace of the Ghanaian people I get elected as president. Um, how would you have felt if your opponents were virtually running parallel structures under your rule in such a situation as we are in? Is it prudent to be constantly in the public domain preferring solutions rather than share your ideas with the appropriate authority which is the presidency? Um, well, I don't have that channel of communication with the presidency unfortunately and um, I, if I had that channel, I probably could have uh, made those suggestions. Um, the, as I said in the first answer to the first question, I'm being a citizen, and um, I believe that in being a citizen, um, I should prefer whatever suggestions I, I have, and that is what I have sought to do. I set up a COVID team to um, help you know, the national response team, and our COVID team has been meeting and they have um, presented two reports to the national uh, response team. They discussed the responses with me. I went through them with it, uh, it with them and we made suggestions. Some of these suggestions that I have made publicly are contained in the reports of our COVID team that were presented to government. And so it's not that I just make them publicly. We also have them on paper and our COVID team has presented two reports to government so far since this outbreak. We've tried to lend our collaboration to government as best as we can, and um, I hope that we have been helpful. Um, I'm not a fan of this man, but to be sincere, his response and action towards the fight against this virus has really made me feel ashamed of myself. Um, I think he has won my love and interest in him. I pray that God will strengthen him for me and Ghana as a whole. And this is from Ajay Samuel. Um, Ajay Samuel, I, I thank you for your kind words. And um, as long as I continue to have life and God grants me good health, I will give back to my country what my country has given to me. I believe my country has been generous to me. And it is my country that has made me who I am. And until I'm six feet in the ground with every energy available to me, I'll continue to participate in public discourse and to offer the best suggestions that I, I have. Um, Don McElvis, how do you feel being condemned by the MPP about the hospitals you built, but now being used as treatment centers? I think I've answered this question uh, already, and I just feel uh, grateful that um, whatever we did has become useful at this time in helping to save Ghanaian uh, lives. And so I don't feel a sense of vindication. I think that all these were built with the, taxpayer of, uh, the, the taxpayers' money of Ghana, and we must make use of them. If, by the grace of God and the uh, permission of the Ghanaian people, I become president again, everything that this government has used taxpayers' money for will not be left abandoned. We'll finish them because it's a waste you know, to use taxpayers' money, leave half completed hospitals, you're paying the loans for them, and yet you won't complete them so that Ghanaians can, can use them. Um, Emmanuel Derikusani, Your Excellency, what do you say about the NHIA that has kept most clinics on their knees at this critical moment? Um, the least said about the N NHIA, the better. Um, the modeling that was done of the NHIA showed that it will last a certain number of years. And so before I left office, I made a committee do an extensive review of the NHIA and to see how we could get additional funds in to prolong the life of the NHIA. I believe that that review exists. And if government can take a look at it, we are taking a look at it. And in our manifesto, um, we will include some of the things that will be necessary to 
um, um, prolong the life of the NHI. Unfortunately, um, the NHI is in a worse condition. Um, it was said that under my administration, the NHI was um, in the mortuary or was about to die. It is now even uh, closer to death than before. I hear that some uh, service providers have not been paid for more than 10 months. Others have not been paid for six months. And um, it's, it's, it's created a major problem because in, when I went on the speak out, in most places people complained that if you went, the only thing you got free was the card and consulting. Aside from that, all medicine, paracetamol and everything, you had to go out and buy. And so um, we, we have to see how we can uh, resuscitate the NHI. Um, all too soon, um, we're almost at the end of this conversation. We're going to have uh, further conversations, uh, digital conversations uh, going forward on the kind of world that uh, we're going to see after this pandemic. And I want you to uh, join me when I call on you. So let me thank all of you for joining, who have found time to join this conversation. Um, it is um, a, a pledge. Uh, I thank you for joining this conversation. Um, and it is a pledge I may, I'm making to make myself available for more interactions, and I will continue to do that. For those who have registered to join the Let's Talk initiative on my website, www.johnmahama.org, I thank you, and I'll be engaging with you all as I promised, and I urge government to help the poor and vulnerable. They need help, and uh, let's continue to be compassionate and to feed them. Let us also uh, protect our health workers. They need PPEs and the basic tools to be able to care for us and um, to be motivated. And let's continue to stay safe to protect ourselves and our families. And I thank you to all, I say thank you to all our media partners that have helped expand the reach of this conversation from online to TV and radio. And I wish the sick God's almighty healing and um, ladies, and gentlemen, good night, and thank you for joining this live digital conversation. May Allah bless all of you, especially as we go into the month of Ramadan, and uh, may the Almighty God continue to bless all of us in our homeland, Ghana. Akpenami, medamwase. Nago de kore, ansan kushung in my own gonja, netuma pam pam, in uh, Dagbani and uh, uh, which one? Yadase. Good night and thank you. <laughs>